Okay. Hag Samek. Thank you guys so much for following along in this series on Hanukkah. This is so exciting. Um, the information I'm going to share with you as it relates to John chapter 10, where Christ is going to Solomon's porch on Hanukkah. We're going to um, unravel some amazing mysteries. What Christ is actually talking about in John chapter 10 is an actual building. It's an actual physical thing. Um, now, in order to understand some of the things that I'm saying in this video, I'm just, this is going to go over way over some of your heads. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. In order just to tell you some of the basics of what I'm saying, you would really have to follow along with the message. You really would actually have to listen to me, follow the message, watch some of the previous videos to do that before we get into this now. Because I can't spend hours and hours of telling you the same thing over and over. When I post a video, I'm not going to post the content again. Okay, so some of these things we've covered for years. And what are we talking about? We're talking about something called measuring the temple. So uh, it's basically a principle of understanding spiritual concepts and constructs by measuring the temple. We find this in Revelation 11 where um, John was given a reed, like a rod, and he was told to measure the temple, measure the altar, and measure the people therein. So what this means is that the people are the temple. Okay? Now, um, once we do that and we, we study that, we find, of course, amazing, amazing things. Amazing prophecy being fulfilled. We find the feasts of Yahweh. We find a... A uh, coded message that is intertwined in all of Christ's teaching, all of his parables, and the teachings um, and vision given to the Apostle John. Okay, so in this one we can see the temple, we can see the promises to the church at Philadelphia. So, let's get right into it, and let's first go over some basics on measuring the temple. Now, what we're going to do is discuss a couple things related to the first temple. Now, we first have the tabernacle that Moses built. Here are the dimensions. Then what we have is the first temple being built, and these are the dimensions, okay? Now, what it has is it has an area where the temple is. The temple is larger than this, but we're just doing a simplified demonstration. We have a brazen labor. We have the altar. We have something called the great court, it's quite possible the great court is over here, but um, nonetheless, we have an, an area described by the, as, as the great court. We don't know exactly all the details of it, guys, but um, these are things we're explaining to you that we have precise measurements of, okay? Moses Tabernacle and the First Temple. And then we come to another th uh, thing called Solomon's Porch. So we can read that in John chapter 10. It talks about Solomon's Porch porch. Now, according to Josephus, this um, building or facility existed throughout all the destruction of the first temple um, time period. It survived the um, destruction by Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon, and it existed all the way until the time of, of Christ. So um, this whole building stayed, and it, it's a building that is 50 cubits, by 100 cubits, okay? And it lies to the east. So, according to Josephus, this survived all the destruction and it existed all the way in the time um, of the book of Acts. So, in the book of Acts, we'll look at it, chapter 3 and 5. Shortly after Pentecost, the disciples were in Solomon's porch. What is the significance of that? We're going to explain it. Now, um, what basically what it is, what Solomon describes in uh, in the scriptures is two two uh, buildings. Okay, actually three, but we have the dimensions of two of them. One of them is called Solomon's porch, hundred cubits by fifty cubits. Then there's another one that is thirty cubits by fifty, and it and it's also uh, got pillars in it. Okay. So this is the promise when Christ said to he that overcomes, I'll make a pillar in the temple. Well, there's lots of pillars. 
This one has a total of 72 if we count that section and this section here. Okay. Now, this has a future fulfillment when we look at Ezekiel's temple. Now, here's Ezekiel's temple, and in Ezekiel's temple, there are actually two buildings with the same dimensions, 100 cubits by 50 cubits. These actually sit on either side of the temple itself, okay? So, um, what this is, guys, is these are places for the priests. It's places like a dining hall and places they would place their garments, okay? We're going to have a full video on describing what these are, but I just want you to see where they are in relationship to the rest of the temple complex in Ezekiel, okay? So what we have is we have these two buildings here. They're called, this is called the north chamber. This is called the south chamber. We have the king's house, okay? Now in the king's house, it's also a palace, but we're going to really look at these two in this particular video. Now, what, is it, what does it actually look like? It looks like this. Okay, here it is. What we're looking at is a side view of this building. Okay, and the side view, this, this measurement here, this is all one building. Okay, but it has pillars in it. Okay, the major feature of Solomon's porch is the pillars. Well, this also has pillars. It's called the North and South Chambers. It's in Ezekiel chapter 42 but it's also called Solomon's Porch. Okay, so Ezekiel's temple is in the future, and it has design elements from Solomon's Porch. Now, of course, Solomon's Porch is destroyed in 70 AD with the rest of the temple, but yet the architectural um, design and story and measurements match that of this facility in Ezekiel. Okay, so what we're doing is we're looking at a side view of this building. You can see it has three stories. It has three stories and it has um, a, a, a space that you can walk through it and then you can walk through um, on these um, each level. Okay, and each level would have uh, these pillars. So these pillars are actually uh, aligned the same way they're in Solomon's porch. Okay, but it's a whole building with three floors, okay? Now, Solomon's porch had windows, and it says there are windows in three tiers. And three tiers meaning three stories or three levels. So that, again, is telling us about this building and facility in Ezekiel's temple, okay? So when we look at it from the side, this is what we're looking at. This is quite high, guys. Each floor or story is about 20 feet high. Yeah, maybe even a little more, okay? Very tall ceilings, um, possibly arches like this, and um, they're, they're tiered like this, okay? Why? Because it says that there are, they are tiered like this because of the pillars. Now, Ezekiel describes this as one building, okay? So now, if we're looking down at the building, the length of it is 100 cubits, and the... Uh, width of it is 50 cubits and in the middle of it is a walkway so again here they are in ezekiel's temple okay so in ezekiel's temple we have these two buildings there's one up here and one here so this is north this is south okay this is east so what you can see is is there are little dots i've drawn so that is the proportions of the spacing of the pillars as they run across so, for example, there were four rows in Solomon's porch. Well, there's four rows here, but there are four rows between two buildings. So you have one row, two row, three, four. And each row is 15 in each row. So, thus, the, the, the buildings have a design element to them, telling us about Solomon's porch. But they actually perform a feature, not just being a large space, because it's a place where of dining, it's a place of feasts. So when Christ is going into that building, okay, he's going into the sheep pen, okay? Prophetically, he's teaching us about the palace of the sheep. Now, allow me to prove that to you. So, here are our notes, and in our notes, what you can see is we are focusing our attention on John chapter 10, 
Okay, this is John chapter 10. This is the book of Ezekiel. And this is the church at Philadelphia. The, prom the promise of the church of Philadelphia, you find in Revelation chapter 3. Um, and uh, was it 7 through 12 approximately, okay? So what are we doing? We are comparing line upon line, precept upon precept. And we can learn about this great ministry of Solomon's palace, okay? So uh, first and foremost, what we have, as we've mentioned, we have the Feast of Dedication. Now, what you do at the feast is you eat, you celebrate, okay? So this is a celebration of a feast. Christ is going to Jerusalem into the temple in winter. Okay, this is the time of the feast right now. And Jesus walked into the temple, into Solomon's porch, Okay, so we showed you Solomon's porch. We showed you how it existed up at the time of uh, Christ's coming. So we went into Solomon's porch, and quite often the Apostle John will give us uh, details about the feast and precise locations in the temple like this, which is very helpful for us. So in John chapter 10, we start from verse 1, and it says, He that enters not by the door. Okay, um, and then... Into the, it, it says, in your version, it probably says the sheepfold. But if you actually look at the Strong's Concordance, you'll see two words. One of them is sheep. The other word is palace. So what we're trying to tell you is Solomon's porch prophetically is in Ezekiel's temple. When it's in Ezekiel's temple, this is the palace of the sheep. It's an actual building. There's two of them, as we showed you, right? But it's, it's a physical thing, Okay. So what he says is, he that enters not by what? The door. Well, there's two doors that you would enter here. Okay, one of them is right here. Actually, they're both in the same location, but they're right here. They're pointed towards the east. So the direction of the sword is pointed towards the east. So there's a door right there. So in Ezekiel Temple, it tells us about this chamber, and it tells us about this door pointed towards the east. All right? But... um. But Christ is talking about this. He's talking about a palace of the sheep. It's an actual building. And, and um, if you read the Strong Concordance, it just describes it as a courtyard or something around the house. So when we say courtyard or something around the house, here is the courtyard. Here is the house. The house is the temple. Okay? When Christ said, you know, I will uh, prepare a place for you. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. Okay, well, the Father's house is the temple. The mansions are the rooms around the temple, like this one, right next to the temple. So it's a courtyard around the house. It's around the tabernacle or the temple, and it's enclosed by a wall. Okay, so there are a few uh, boundaries, but this you can see is a wall. Uh, it's closed by a wall, and the flocks uh, were herded in for the night. So um, another example of it, there's actually two, so we're, we're uh, discussing this one because you'll see why in the details, but this is also the king's house. And in the king's house, it also has the um, description of a palace where you have the building, you have a space around the building, the courtyard they're talking about, and a wall, okay? So the king's house meets that description, but so does the north and south chambers in Ezekiel's temple, these here. Uh, so they are enclosed in what's called the inner court. So in Ezekiel's uh, temple area, this is within the inner court. The inner court is here, it's the temple, and it continues on to other spaces. Okay, now, um, this is the promise to the church of Philadelphia. Okay, he said he's the door. Well, he says to he who overcomes, I will open, they, will, they will have an open door, no man can shut. Okay. So that door is actually to a room, to a, a facility. So the whole book of Revelation is talking about doors. It's talking about rooms. It's talking about the temple. Okay. Well, that's Ezekiel's temple it's talking about. So uh, this is Solomon's porch. So Solomon's porch is thus represented in Ezekiel's temple as these chambers. Okay. But you can read about Solomon's porch in 1 Kings chapter 7. It's called the porch of the pillars. The house of the forest of Lebanon. Now, most people that draw this make the mistake of not including the pillars. The pillars are the main feature. What it says is, it says the pillars are not like the pillars in the gates. The gates also have pillars. But the main feature, besides just the rooms, is the pillars. 
in this, okay? So we got the pillars, we got the rooms, all right? That's what this is talking about. It's matching that of Solomon, what he built the, the porch of the pillars of the house of the of Lebanon. And it's the ch priest chambers. And the importance of the pillars is to the church of Philadelphia, he overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of God. Okay, well, that's actual. So then the people are the temple. So the, the actual physical um, pillars that are posted in the temple will have people's names on them. They will actually be people. Okay, so that's what he meant. You know, to evil overcomes, I'll make a pillar in the temple. All right. And John 10, 3, to him, um, to him, the porter will open. Now, if you look up this word porter, it's a watcher angel. It's, it's someone that watches the door. That's literally what it means in Greek. It's a watcher angel. Okay. And this is the key of David. Okay. Uh, the promise of the key of David. And he calls the sheep by name. John 10, 3. So you can see the names of the tribes. And Jehovah overcomes will have a new name. Christ said, I am the door to the sheep. Well, there's an actual door. There's a physical door that's part of this room. Okay? The door to the sheep palace. Uh, by me and if an answer, he shall be saved and shall go in and go out. So you go in and out through this door. And once you go out, then you're in an area which is the outer court. Okay? So, um, that's also what you see. He says, he that overcomes will be a pillar in the temple. He shall no longer go out. Well, I mean, he can go out, but what that means is now he's actually part of the building, part of the structure. Okay? And, um, and the Ezekiel used interesting wording as one enters therein. And he will find pasture. Again, this building is the place where the priests eat. So the fine pasture is just like the feast, all the feasts, the wedding supper, all those feasts take place in here. That's where the priests eat. This is the fold, the palace, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. So again, the wording here is referring to the, the prince, okay? So the priests eat in the, in the dining hall, as we said, but in the, in the whole uh, complex is there someone called the prince. The prince is David, and David is described as the one shepherd, David the prince. You see that, Ezekiel 34, 23. And the people ran into Solomon's porch. So then we get into Acts 3, 11. Um, get that on the screen for you. I'm running out of light. Um, and the people, uh, this is after the day of Pentecost. So again, Pentecost is in the third month. Hanukkah is in the ninth month. But where did the disciples go? After uh, Pentecost, when they were in the temple, they were in Solomon's porch. And the people greatly wondered, Acts 5.12, and they were all of one accord in Solomon's porch. So what's happening is prophetically, the early disciples, the early apostles, they were the sheep. They were the promise of what Christ said. He's the door. He's the door of the sheepfold. It doesn't just say temple, guys. They specifically went into Solomon's porch. And... On that message, Christ said, I am the Son of God. And he quoted a verse. It said, you are gods. Well, that's in Zechariah 12, 8. In that day, he that is feeble among them shall be as David. Okay? In the house of David, as God, as an angel of the Lord before them. And as in Revelation, it's talking about the wall. He measured the wall, 144 cubits, according to the measure of man, which is angel. All right, guys, I'm running out of sunlight, so I want to conclude this video. This is part of a playlist called Show Them the Pattern. Measure the temple. Measure the design. Show them the pattern, okay? We're going to have more on this facility. We're going to teach more on this, but I want to show you its connection to Hanukkah. I want you to show you the connection to the Sheep Palace. Amazing. So guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you're following along with each video in the Hanukkah series. We're, we're releasing all this information on Hanukkah. We're going to have more on how Hanukkah is, yes, the wedding supper. This is the, the pasture of the sheep, okay? And it's also a message to us on Armageddon. So thanks for watching, and God bless you.